children, my name is Gracie. Are you ready for the most epic adventure ever? Welcome to Camp Meeting 2021. We are going to have a fantastic time together. Our theme for this Camp Meeting is... I will go! There will be lots of singing, fun games, parables too. We have an amazing, we have amazing discovery that our science station and impactful Bible lessons where we get to meet new Bible heroes who stepped out face to face. <laughs> you get it? Face to face. And do you know the most amazing thing about this camp meeting? We get to journey back in time to meet our favorite Bible heroes who are called to go. Little David, called by God to slay a giant. Self-willed Jonah, called by God to go to Nineveh and won the Ninevites to stop sinning. Righteous Daniel, called by God in captivity to take an important message to the kings of his time. Gracious Rebecca, called by God, called by God to leave her family and start a new, and join Isaac to start a new family in the line of the for the line of the Messiah. And wait for it. Jesus Christ, the ultimate superhero, called by God to save the whole world from sin by dying a painful death on the cross. Hmm, did they go? There is only one way to find out. Join us on a ride that you'll never forget. Tell it on the mountain. 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 Go and tell the world. Go and tell the world that Jesus is Lord. Tell it on the mountain. Go and make this. for camp meeting. Well, I'm really excited about today's lesson. We're going to learn about my all-time favorite Bible hero. Who is it? To answer that question, I want us to play a game. I love games. What kind of game shall we play? A guessing game. I call it Mystery Hero. Hmm, I don't know about that. I'm not very good at guessing games. I think I will pass. Come on, 
Just try it. I know you may enjoy it. Okay. Come on, Angie. It wouldn't be the same without you. Okay, fine. Let's do this. Awesome. As you know, our theme for this camp meeting is... I, I will, will go. Right. So every day, we learn about Bible heroes who are the true missionary spirit. Today, we are going to learn about a hero of faith who was not afraid. Hmm. Is that a clue? Yes, that is the first clue. It must have been Paul. Paul was fearless. He was not afraid to share the gospel even when he was beaten, shipwrecked, imprisoned, and in the end, killed. Paul will be in heaven for sure. Paul was a true missionary, but today's mystery hero is found in the Old Testament. <gasps> You sure? I think missionaries are only found in the New Testament. No, not really. From the time Adam and Eve disobeyed God, man has always needed a savior. Many people still do not know that they need to be saved. Throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we have heroes of faith who answered the Lord's call and said, I will go, like righteous Enoch, and faithful old Noah who preached for a hundred years. God wants us to lead people to his family or to his neighborhood. Ah, now I get it. Back to the guessing game. You said a hero of faith who was not afraid? Yes. Oh, that's easy. The answer is Samson. Samson was strong and brave. At one point, he beat down 1,000 1, Philistines with nothing but a jawbone. Good try, but no. Let me tell you a little bit more about our hero. He was just a boy. Samuel! Of course, Samuel was only a boy when God called him to serve his people. That night, when God called him, he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And he became Israel's judge for many, many years. Hmm, good guess, but actually close, but not quite. <gasps> the mighty Gideon, remember his crew of 300 men? Gideon was brave enough to answer God's call and break the idols that his people were worshipping. He led the army of Israel in the battle against the Midianites. I think I should give you another clue. He was just a boy. I know, I know. It is the little maid. Ha! Give her a chance. Get this. She, the little maid told General Neyman to give his, to go to, to go to, to go to prophet Elijah in Israel to get healed. Remember he had leprosy? Her brave act caused General Neyman to give his life to God. She was a true missionary. He said a boy. The little maid was a girl. Oops! That's okay. It is actually a beautiful story. The little maid was very brave. But today's mystery hero is found in the Old Testament. But Gracie is right. But Gracie is right. I did say a boy. Boys and girls at home, can you guess who our mystery hero is? Allow me to give you the final clue. He was... A giant slayer. <gasps> David! Correct. Our mystery hero is a 
about David. David was a brave boy. Well done. How is David important to us Christians who want to go out to spread the word of God to those who do not know? But first, let's pray. Let's pray. A kind and loving Father, I thank you for this evening. May you give us the opportunity to to understand about David. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the most amazing thing about David? He played the harp. Well, remember when King Saul was tormented by the evil spirits and he was so sad, David would play a harp and the evil spirits would leave him. Then he became happy again. But that was not the most amazing thing. I think his trust in God was pretty amazing. Although the, Isra the other Israelites hid behind rocks, he said, Don't let anyone be discouraged. I'll go fight the Philistines. Even though King Saul said that you are just a small boy, he said, I will go. Precisely. Boys and girls. That is a true missionary spirit. Fearless. He said to Goliath, you come to me with a spear, you come to me with a sword, but I come to you with the name of the Lord of hosts, the name of the Lord of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. you are not good enough to serve God, to lead that prayer group, or to tell our friend about Jesus, do not believe it. You know what? I have a bravery booster for you. Real heroes do not have superpowers. They are just willing to let he who has superpowers work through them. I will read for us our memory verse. It is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. Then I will ask a question. There we go. Brothers and sisters, think of what you are when you are called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, but many, sorry, not many were influential, not many were noble. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the, the strong. I end there, and now. The question is, what do we learn from this story? uses everybody 
that God, God uses people of all shapes and all sizes to do his great work. Although I'm just a child, although I don't know, I'm not strong and mighty, although I do not come from a rich family, I know God can use me to do his great work. My name is Grace Yakumo, and I will go. I have an important job to do for God, and not be afraid. The Bible tells me in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a, a sound mind. God will protect me wherever I go. He will guide me. My name is Felix Jr. and I will go. I love being on God's team. He always wins. Don't look at me. I am only seven years old. I, I am the tiniest in our class. Nobody notices me. Nobody pays attention to me. Everybody picks on me. How can I go for Jesus? Have you not just talked about David? He was just a shepherd when God called him to be king. And he was also a little boy with a little sling and a harp. That's all he had. Do you know what? Little people can take care of big problems too. The same way God helped David to beat Goliath, he can help you achieve great things for his kingdom. Yes, like the little maiden Samuel. The, the battle you fight, God is bigger than it. God will help you face your fears. Let's say it together. My, My God, God is bigger. bigger. We say it one more time. My God is bigger. My God is powerful. He stands invisible. I will hold on to him. I will hold on to him. Through God I will overcome. He's the rock that I never move. I will hold on to him. I will hold on to you. Going out for Jesus may seem a little bit scary sometimes, especially if you are shy like me. But I trust my Jesus. I will go because he has told me to follow him. My name is Angela and I will go. Jesus says, oh, I will do where Jesus leads, for I will go what Jesus says. Follow me. Come follow me. Come follow me. Come follow me. 
is time for a moment of science with Professor Shilton. This is our science lab, and I am Professor Shilton. These two are my lovely assistants, Karani and Deborah. We are Christian scientists, and Deborah is going to pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, lead us now as we are starting this session. Amen. Amen. We are very excited that we are just about to start Camp Meeting 2021. And what is our theme? I, I will, will go. go. So today lesson, today's lesson, we are going to learn about a very interesting science lesson that's going to teach us how to go forward and share Jesus. So most of us here are little people. And we have learned that God can use little people to do his great work, like David and Samuel. So, Karani, um, can you tell us what our bravery, our bravery booster is? Our bravery booster is God gives me his Holy Spirit so that I can do what he asked me to do. Yes, God will fill us up with his Holy Spirit so we can go out and live our faith. So, today we're going to do a, an, a science experiment that's going to help us remember this. But before we start, a disclaimer. Children, please don't do this alone. H make sure you have an adult or your parent with you so that they can help you do this experiment. Deborah, what do you need for experiment? You need gas. Mm -hmm. Baking soda. Mm -hmm. Food color. Mm -hmm. A balloon. Mm -hmm. An empty bottle, that's right. So, first thing we do is we'll take our empty bottle and we'll fill it with vinegar. Everyone? Continue, continue. Good. Next, we are going to take our balloons and fill them with baking soda. Now take a balloon. Make sure you have someone to help you to hold the balloon open so that you can spoon in three teaspoons of baking powder. So for us, I'll have my assistant here help me hold. I'll hold it open, then my assistant will help me spoon in. Then, next step, we will take our balloons and cover the opening of the bottle with them, like this. You need help? Let me help you. I put it is it has powder in Yeah. 
Melissa? Good. Then, next, we are going to, when you're ready, you're going to tip over your balloon. Careful, careful. And then you watch what happens to the balloon. Can you see what's happening? A chemical reaction is happening. Can you see what's happening? Say, wow. 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 Oh, this one's torn. So, as you can see, a chemical reaction happened that made the balloon fill up with air. This is cool, right? So, just like the empty bottle, this represents our lives. This is us, an empty bottle, and we need to be filled with the word of God. Deborah, how do you do this? By reading our Bibles, coming to church, and hearing the word of God. Yes, but the word of God is not, on, that's, only that is not enough. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will act as a catalyst to help us have impact when you go to share Jesus. We have used a very big word, catalyst. Karani, can you explain what a catalyst is? A catalyst is something that causes a chemical reaction or a big change to happen. Yes. So when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and fills us up, it will, help, it will bring a big change into our lives and it will help us as we go out to share Jesus. It will help us have a big impact and it will make, it will bring a big difference in the kingdom of God. It will swell up just like the balloon. It will blow, it will continue to grow and grow and grow. And one more thing we, know, we, don't, we need not to forget is like, like the vinegar, we alone can do nothing. But we can do all, all things, things through Christ, Christ who gives us strength. strength. And there's a song for this. I can do all things, all things, all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things, all things, all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Yes, that's Philippians 4.13. And it tells us, just like little David who slew the giant, little people like you and you and you can be used by God to take care of big trouble. That's all we had for today for Science Station. And remember one thing, that science is all about searching for the truth. And true science will always lead to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And remember, whenever we are learning about science, we are learning, learning more about, about our Creator, creator God. God. Karani, close us with our dear friend. Yeah, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing us to church. Thank you for letting us have the science. Thank you for this experiment. Thank you that we learned how your Holy Spirit strengthens us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I will go. All right then, let's go to the farm. I like to go to the farm where the dogs quack, quack. I like to go to the farm where the cows moo, moo. I like to go to the farm. I like to go to the farm. I like to go to the farm in the land of big lambs. Hi, children. We are going to have lots of fun with Farmer Andy today. In case you are wondering, I'm Farmer Andy. 
and I'm Stephanie. There's lots of work around the farm today. Roddy the hen has been busy today. She laid lots of eggs. They're right here in my basket. And Susie the cow is in a bad mood. There's no milk in my pen, but that's okay. They it's so cold today, Farmer Andy. Are we going to do anything in the farm? Do you know what? I like the sunshine. I like the rain. I like the wind that blows. Any kind of weather is all right for me. Yo, oh, 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 yo. Yo, oh, 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 oh. What are we doing today, Farmer Andy? Yeah, there's plenty of work around the farm to do. We are going to plant trees. Here is my seed right here. Huh? It's so small. That tree is going to be the tiniest tree ever. I know it is a tiny seed, but you know it is going to be a big tree. I planted one while ago. Put it on the ground. You take a watering can. It is so tiny, but God makes it grow and grow and grow. In the beginning, Jesus sent his disciples to share God's word. They were not important people, just fishermen and other poor people. They went around the world sharing God's word. God's word. They, they, and guess what? Who, who, who know of God? Who knew of God? All these people who knew of God, because this work started only twelve men. What does that now, children? What does that teach us? God help small people to do big work. And in the same way, God uses little people to do great things. Wow, that's a beautiful story. I know a song about that. I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you Fishers of men, if you follow me. Follow me, if you follow me. I will make you fishers of men, if you follow me. And do you know what? Now it is your turn to go out in, into the world and finish God's work. Will you go for Jesus? Yes. yes. I, from here at the farm, bye! bye. Shall we go for a walk today? A walk today? A walk today? Shall we go for a walk today to see what God has given? Hmm, small wonder. 
Hi, boys and girls. My name is Ranger Jasmine. Guess what I'm doing with my binoculars? lessons? I am bird watching today. I have found a fascinating tiny little bird called a hummingbird. Did you know hummingbirds are the smallest birds in the world? Their teensy wincy legs are only used for patching and moving sideways while patched. Their legs are so tiny they can't walk or hop. They can't smell things. They are so, so tiny they weigh less than a coin. But their tiny little wings beat 200 times per second while diving, 70 times per second while just flying. They are the they are the only birds that can fly backwards. And although they are very tiny, their long beaks and little tongues are just perfect for lapping nectar out of flowers. They help us get more flowers. You see, although the hummingbird is very tiny, God has given it a job to do. When it's not flying, it looks like it's a fragile, impossibly small, and awkward bird. With its small beak that stretches to cl close to the same length as its body size, it does it doesn't it does not even look like it can fly. But oh boy, when it flies, it flips its, wing, its wings too fast until you can't see it move. It zips and dives and hoovers and even flies backwards. God has packed a lot of power into this tiny little creation. God does the very same thing with you. It doesn't matter if you feel too young or small to make a difference in your world. Just like little David, God has packed you with amazing power and still come for the Holy Spirit into you. Just like the hummingbird looks for blooming flowers, you too can look for people who need God's love and share Jesus with them. God gives you everything you need to spread the joy of his love around you, you around you, making the world a more beautiful place. Remember, our bravery booster, God uses people of all shapes and sizes to do his great work. This is Ranger Jasmine telling you to, to go and out and make a difference. I will go. We start with prophecy. What is prophecy and not? Hi. Um, I would like to invite my friend, teacher Abu, to help us today and this whole week for camp meeting. Wait, 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 wait. Did you know this week there's camp meeting? Oh, yes. There's camp meeting and all of you invited. And there's going to be prophecy. But I have someone to teach us, as I say. Teacher Abura. Teacher Abura, welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Divine. And what are we going to study today? Mm. Um, I think prophecy is about Daniel and Revelation. Which one now? Now, prophecy is not about Daniel and Revelation. Prophecy is about Jesus Christ. That is why when the book of Revelation starts, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also told his disciples in the book of John chapter 13, verse number 19, Jesus Christ told his disciples, see, I am telling you things before they happen so that when they happen, you believe in me. So Jesus Christ was telling his disciples, I am telling you things in advance so that when they happen, your faith will be very strong. But what does revelation mean? Revelation is a translation from an old old Greek term which is called apocalypse. Apocalypse just means 
events that are going to take place at the end of time. Oh, so which end of time? Because there's a party and it ends. There's a wedding and it ends. What end of time? The world is going to come to an end. <gasps> and Jesus Christ is going to come back. Now we are living at the end of time. And we are told before Jesus Christ comes back, we must tell the whole world to worship Jesus Christ. But the Bible also tells us, other people will tell us to worship the image of the beast. And that people who will not worship the image of the beast, the Bible tells us, they will be killed. That will happen at the end of time. The Bible also tells us the people who will refuse to accept the mark of the beast, they cannot buy and sell. When that happens, the Bible says the people who worship God will always proclaim to all the world, please don't receive the mark of the beast. In the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse number 9. Please read Revelation chapter 14, verse number 9. It talks about the third angel. What does the third angel say? Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And mm -hmm. it says, Finally, a third angel came and shouted, Here is what will happen if you worship the beast and the idol and have the mark of the beast on your hand or forehead. So here is what is going to happen. Then verse number 10 says, what is going to happen? Wow. It says, you will have to drink the wine that God gives to everyone who makes you angry. You will feel his mighty anger and you will be tortured with fire and burning sulfur while the holy angels and the Lamb look on. Now the Bible says the people who will not worship God at the end of time, who will receive the mark of the beast, who will worship the image of the beast, the Bible gives us a warning. They will drink the wine of the anger of God or the wrath of God, which will be poured without mixture into the cup of his anger. Now, they will be punished. And that is why this week we are going to look at the seven last plagues. <clears throat> God threatening us? Isn't he loving? God is loving, but you know the reason why God is threatening? Did, you, did we read Revelation chapter 13? These people have threatened the people of God. They told the people of God the, that they had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast will cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast to be killed and that he caused all, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that they cannot buy and sell, except the people who have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So that is what they have done to God's people. So God must avenge for his people. Do you remember what happened before the children of Israel left the land of Egypt? No, but please, can you tell me about it? Before they left the land of Egypt, Pharaoh refused to let them go and worship their God. God sent ten plagues in Egypt until the children of Israel were able to believe that God reigns over all the earth. Then they released the children of Israel. Oh, yes, I remember that story. But this beast, do you know sometimes I draw on my hands? What mark is this? And the beast, is it a sheep? Is it a lion? What kind of beast? I learned in science there are a lot of beasts. 
Now, this beast symbolizes kingdoms and mighty nations that are going to come upon the earth. And the beast that is talked about in Revelation 13, one, the first beast is the nation of America. The second beast is the nation of the Roman Catholic Church. At the end of time, they will force people to worship God on Sunday. If you want to go to church on Sabbath, you cannot buy and sell except you worship like America and has forced the whole world to worship. That is why God becomes very angry because he wants to take his people from this world and that they may be able to go to paradise and live forever and ever. Now, next time, tomorrow, we are going to learn about the angels that are going to pour the wrath of God on the earth. But the reason why the wrath of God is poured is because there are people who refused to worship like they are like everyone in the world is being forced to worship. Remember, it is important to keep the commandments of God and have faith like the faith of Jesus. Wow. I really feel bad and good. But what I know is Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. So, and tomorrow we are going to look at what is going to happen just before he comes back again. So because we only had 10 minutes, we are going to stop at that. Tomorrow we must make sure we learn about what happens just before Jesus comes again. But dear children, let us remember that even when the plagues were poured on the land of Egypt, the children of Israel were not affected by the plagues of God's wrath. That is why when the last plagues are going to be poured on the earth, the children of God will not be affected. See you. I felt very scared. Now you can pray that we may finish this session today. Children, let's close our eyes, bow down our heads, and put our hands together to have a prayer. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. Lord, thank you for showing us what will happen before Jesus comes. Help us with the camp meeting we're having that it may go well. Help all the children outside there to be good. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, children. See you tomorrow.
Six. 
Peter, we are going to take a message to the world. You remember how he ran? He ran. Run, Peter, run. Run to your grave. Run, Peter, run. The stone is rolled away. Good evening, boys and girls. I know in the morning they introduced me and my name was very funny. Who remembers my name? Aha, uh -huh. people don't even remember my name. My name is Tuveli Shena Testa Siomara. Ah, that is not important. What is important is my real name. My real name, which I believe if we get to heaven, I want Jesus to give me that name, is Pastor Popcorn. Pastor? 
Pastor Popcorn. Why? Because the Bible clearly tells us that when the dead in Christ shall rise, they will come out of their graves. And in my imagination, boys and girls, I want to imagine they will pop out of their graves like popcorn. Now, you know when mommy is making popcorn for you in the house, in the sufuria or in the pot, depending where you are, she puts a little yellow seed inside and there is oil. And then after a while, the scent changes and then you start hearing sounds. Pa, 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 pa. Those little sounds, if you open the sufuria just by mistake, what happens? Popcorn pops out of the, out of the sufuria. So I believe without a doubt in my mind, when the trumpet shall sound <laughs> very soon, the dead in Christ shall pop out of their graves. And us who are here alive and well will also pop up into the sky to spend forever and ever and ever and ever with Jesus. So I want us to, to practice popping right now. I will count to three. When I get to three, you will pop out of your chair or your bench you will pop out of your bed, wherever you are, you will pop. We'll, we'll just imagine for a second, Jesus has come. Now the Bible says the trumpet shall sound. And when the trumpet shall sound, even the dead will hear and they'll pop out of their graves. Children, are you ready? Children, are you ready? When I get to three, you're going to pop. I'm getting ready. All right, are you ready? One... Two and a half and three quarters. Three. Ah, yes. Who we'll pop into the sky? Aha, some did not pop. I saw you. There is an adult who forgot to pop. So for your sake, we're going to pop out of our graves again. Or we're going to pop to the sky again. Are you ready? This time I want to trickle our count to three. Are you ready? I can see, I can see Amy is ready. I can see Abigail is ready. Is her name Abigail? I've forgotten. But she's ready. I can see Joy is ready. Are we ready? One, two. Are you ready? Three. Ah, yes. We'll pop out of our graves and we'll pop and spend eternity with Jesus Christ. How many are ready to go to heaven? Our theme is I will, I will, our theme is I will go. So before we have our little sermonette, I want us to pray. And when it's time for prayer, you pray after me, but you do exactly as I do. You say, Jesus loves me. And because I'm from Zimbabwe, today we'll learn the vele, tomorrow we'll learn another language. You say, U Jesu, U Yangi. Tanda. Pray after me, dear Jesus. Thank you for your word. Now, as we learn, send your Holy Spirit to help us understand. Amen. Turn your Bibles, boys and girls, we're going to learn about <laughs> a very, very powerful man. He's one of my favorite, favorite people. His name is Elijah. He's found, his story is found in 1 Kings chapter 17. Now, I find Elijah to be a very, very funny character. Why? Because Elijah did everything God told him to do. If you go to 1 Kings chapter 17... It says, verse 1, it says, And Elisha the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord liveth of Israel, there will be no rain these years except at my word. Let's go quickly to, get to verse 5. Verse 5 says, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and did according to the word of who? According to the word of the Lord. Now, boys and girls, I want, to, I want us to learn something. As our theme is, I will go. You cannot go without Jesus. Can you go, without, with, can you go alone? Do you think David killed Goliath alone? No. Who was with David? Jesus. Do you think, hmm, do you think Gideon went alone? No. 
Gideon went with Jesus. So as we go, we want to go with Jesus. There's a song I like. Ah, my pianist has gone. There's a song. Yes, yes, yes. Anywhere with Jesus. Ah, she'll play it for me quickly. Ah, yes. Anywhere. I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without him, dear earth joys would end. Anywhere with Jesus is a place of rest. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. So the story goes, Elijah came and stood before. And stood before King Ahab. And when he stood before King Ahab, he told him, King Ahab, it will not rain for the next three and a half years. And then it disappeared. Can you imagine? God told Elijah to go and tell King Ahab. It's like you going to your president and telling him, President, because you are not obeying God, it will not rain for the next three and a half years. And for sure, guess what, boys and girls? It did not rain. But what I like about this story, if you keep going in the same chapter to verse 8, it says, and then the word of God came to him and said, Arise and go to Zarephath. What I like about Elijah is that whatever God told him to do, he did. And he, and he went where God told him to go. And our theme this week is, I will go where God wants me to go. So Elijah went to Zarephath. We know it's a very, very long story. Where The, 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 the point of the story is Elijah listened to God. Now, let's just move a bit ahead. Three and a half years passes, there is no rain. Can you imagine not having rain for three and a half years. That's a long time. If there was no rain in Kenya for three and a half years, do you know what would happen? Kenya would become a desert. It would become dry. All the trees around us here would look like skeletons. It would just be a tree and branches. And the story goes on to say, let's go together to First Kings chapter 18, verse Verse 1, and it says, It came to pass after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The third year saying, Go present yourself to Ahab, I will send rain on earth. Elijah again was told to, by God. God said, Go. And Elijah went. Now I have a question to ask you. How many like sports? How many like running? When they say, On your marks, get set, go. Do you just stop there and do nothing? No, what do you do? You run, right? Because he said, on your mask, get set, go. So whenever Elijah was told by God to go, he would go. And the story goes on to say, Elijah came and stood before Ahab and told him it is going to rain. And Ahab did not believe him. If you continue reading in the same story, in the same story in chapter, in 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 44, it says, Elijah prayed. He prayed. He prayed the first time, there was no rain. He prayed the second time, there was no rain. He prayed the third time, there was no rain. He prayed the fourth time, there was no rain. The fifth time, there was no rain. The sixth time, there was no rain. But the seventh time, guess what? Rain came. But what I love about the seventh time, if we all go quickly to the last verse in that chapter, it says, then the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and, and, and it was upon him, and he ran ahead of Ahab. Boys and girls, I want us to learn today that if, if we go with God, God goes with us. And the Bible says the hand of God was upon who? Was upon Elijah. So for you to go wherever God wants you to go, you can't go alone. You have to go with God. You have to go with God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. My dear people, are you here? Are you here? You're here. You're here. Very good. Do the verse with me. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. It says, pray without ceasing. Go with me. Pray without 
ceasing. It means never stop praying. Elijah prayed and prayed and God heard his prayer. Just like you boys and girls, if you want God to go with you, wherever it is you want to go, just like the song we sang, anywhere with Jesus I can go, you must, you must, you must pray. How many promise from today on us that they'll be praying so that Jesus can go with them? Hallelujah. And if you go with God, everywhere you go, you'll be safe because, can I move? Because, because when Jesus comes, if you go with Jesus, guess what will happen? When he comes, when the trumpet is sounds, pa -pa 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 -pa, what will happen? You will pop. Can we pop before I go? Are you ready? One, two, three, pop! Ah! Yes, we'll pop into the sky to spend forever and ever with Jesus. Shall we pray to end our session? Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that as you are with Elijah, you also be with each and every one of us, all the boys and all the girls, all the mothers, all the fathers, all the aunties, all the uncles, all our brothers and all our sisters. Please continue to be with us until you come and teach us every day to pray and never stop. We pray all this believing and trusting in your mighty name, King Jesus. Amen. God bless you.